This is a typical mass-produced lightsaber component blade. The LEDs are about one inch apart and are soldered to a pre-made uh, wiring harness. And there are a couple of problems with this. First of all, the thickness of the harness means that if you're looking at the lightsaber on the side, much of the light's going to be blocked by this. Uh, the other problem is, is the light comes out of the LED, mostly aimed straight forward, and this face absorbs a lot of the light. Uh, it's not a very efficient system. Much better is the handmade component blade, which you see here. This one was made by Makoto Sai, very highly respected uh, lightsaber maker. What he does is he wires individual LEDs much closer. These are about two and a half LEDs per inch. These are also much brighter LEDs than these, and this produces a much brighter blade. To increase its durability, the uh, wire string is um, wrapped in uh, cellophane tape. Uh, this gives it more strength, but unfortunately, it also reflects some of the light back, and you get some losses from that. One of the problems with increasing LED, um, lightsaber brightness by putting more and more LEDs together is, first of all, if you're using 5 millimeter LEDs, it's hard to get more than about 2.7 per inch because at that point they're actually bumping up against each other. And even if you did that, it wouldn't be that much brighter because much of the light from the previous LED is going to get absorbed by the body of the next LED. And this is really bad because that heat tends to drive the temperature up to the point where the LEDs can start failing. For most high performance lightsabers, such as this Makoto Sai, it is hard to get more than 2.6, 2.7, LEDs per inch. That's where I invented the supernova concept. To get more LEDs per inch and therefore a brighter lightsaber, I took a standard 5 millimeter LED like this and remachined it to be much shorter. I filed off the back and used a, used a 120 millimeter countersink to countersink a cone into the head of the LED. This shortened the length and also created a cone whose point was aimed right at the light emitting part of the diode so that instead of the light being ejected straight forward, it hit the cone and was e uh, reflected out towards the sides. This eliminates most of the problem of the previous LED shining its light into the next LED. What that enabled me to do was shorten the distance between LH, each LED to the point where there were now seven LEDs per inch, almost three times as many as a uh, comparable high-end lightsaber. That is the supernova concept. Remachining LEDs so that you can get a higher LED per inch density in the lightsaber and therefore a brighter blade. Normal lightsabers use a plastic foam diffuser to soften the light so that it covers the entire blade and also makes the blade look thicker. This has an enormous impact on how bright any lightsaber can be because this is foam and it's a very effective thermal insulator. Consequently, you can't overdrive the LEDs or the heat will build up because they're insulated and cause them to burn out. Another problem is that although this uh, is fairly transparent, it absorbs about one-third of the light that goes through it. So if you have a 10-watt 
component blade lightsaber and you're using this type of foam insulate uh, foam diffuser you're really only seeing about a uh, little over six and a half watts of light to eliminate the problem of thermal insulation caused by the foam diffusers and the loss of light as it passes through them I created the starburst concept instead of a foam diffuser I use very thin, clear, transparent discs to support the um, LED string inside the lightsaber's tubing. This completely eliminates the uh, insulating effect caused by the foam so that I can overdrive these LEDs much higher than you could do with a regular lightsaber. And also, because the light is not being absorbed, by the foam diffuser, it's much brighter. The downside is that the core effect is so strong in this lightsaber uh, that many, and I agree with them, would say that it doesn't look like a lightsaber. But this isn't intended to be a replacement for uh, standard uh, component uh, blade lightsabers. It's a technology or a concept demonstration Okay, let's take them outside and see how the Supernova Starburst concept uh, stands up against uh, standard technology. One thing I want to make clear, I am not saying that this is a better lightsaber than the other examples I'm going to show you. This isn't a lightsaber, this is a uh, technology demonstrator, if you will. Uh, this blade does not scroll, there's no sound effects, all it does is turn on and off. What I was trying to do here is explore the limits of what can be accomplished with component blade lightsabers. Another problem I'd like to talk about is the issue of photographing uh, lightsabers. Once the blade gets beyond a certain brightness, the sensors in the camera are overloaded and the blade can be 10 times brighter and it's not going to register as any uh, brighter than the first one. So what I would recommend is when the uh, supernova blade is turned on, uh, don't look so much at the blade itself, but at how much light it is shining on the surrounding area and compare that to how much light the other lightsabers uh, shown on them. That'll give you a better idea of how much brighter it is. First up, we have a $30 Hasbro uh, lightsaber. This one's blue, I couldn't find the green one. Next, we have my old trusty Master Replicas Yoda lightsaber. It's a little brighter. And now for my Makoto Sai V3 lightsaber. And lastly, the prototype blade for the Supernova Starburst blade. As you can see, it has a very strong core and many criticize it for that because it doesn't look like a lightsaber. But this isn't a lightsaber, this is just a uh, component blade demonstration. 